So come up to Mud Fossil University. This is where you're going to find out the reality of this stuff. I have a whole, whole new series of Mud Fossils Part 1 up to, I don't know how high we're going. It's, up, it's over 20. Well, I, there's hundreds of videos, but I'm trying to organize it, and I'll put that in a playlist. I'm not an organized person. doesn't matter. This is all little clips of things that you should know about. And if you come in here and you have a question, you say, well, that can't be right. Well, let's discuss it. You tell me why you don't think it's right. And then we'll go from there. But we have energy, we have the history, we have the earth, we have space, we have light, history, how these things were constructed in the past, 5G, the disaster that's coming up with 5G. Absolute nightmare. And the legislators are not helping us. You need to talk to your legislators. I'm trying to do what I can. All the different things of how things solidify and, and all of the mysteries in the world. I'm telling you, I said to my wife the other day, I feel like I'm Roger, uh, you know, they used to have that thing was uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not. Well, now it's like Roger's Believe It or Not. They can, I'm getting people every day, I mean, just flooded with things, questions about what do you think about this, what do you think about that. And I have an opinion on everything, so... <laughs> You know, it's, I love mysteries. I do. I can't help myself. I, I'm sorry. That's just the way I am. So, uh, you know, I see something. If I can't explain it, I, I have a hard time sleeping. I'm telling you that right now. I just can't. I'd go by, past these things. And, and there's so many of them now that I am not getting much sleep. I'm telling you, it's a nightmare. Really, it is. It's, it's just that the world is so wrong the way they have interpreted everything. It's just unbelievable. And it goes from from the academics to the religious people. It, not, nothing has been interpreted with mud fossil eyes. They, just have, they haven't even had their eyes open. They've been blind people walking around, like infants walking around in the middle of the woods with mittens on <laughs> and blind. I, I don't know what else to say. They, they, if you don't start from the right place, how, you can't get there from here. That's what they say up in Maine, you can't get there from here. Well, if you can't understand where you are, you can't get anywhere. You don't even know where you're going. How can you get where you're going when you don't know where you are? And that's where everything is now. It's so, so wrong-headed. And I'm willing to discuss this with anyone. And so far, not a single response from anyone that is making all of these statements and claims of it's this, it's that, all oh, energy and light and space and geology, all these things, not a word from them, not a syllable. They will not address the facts that I present with their theoretical nonsense. All right, God bless you. I love you. Pay attention. Learn reality. That's all I can tell you. Hey, hello, my good friends. It's Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, looking into the skull asteroid. Been swamped with people sending. Have you seen this? What do you think about this? Well, I looked at it. I've been looking at it for a while now. I think this has been going on for, geez, I think years, but I, I'm not sure. Anyway, let's just let's see what it has to say here. Let's just start to, and take a quick look at this. It says the asteroid, skull asteroid returns this year, but it's not really a skull and you probably won't see it anyway. Well, who's to say it's not a skull, first of all? But it could be a skull. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. However, I'm going to show you what it also might be. But I, I believe everything in space is literally biological. Comet 67P, 100% biological. Not just my opinion, that's NASA. You see this Comet 67P, organic. This is from NASA. This is not my guess. This is NASA's actual mission. They landed a rover on there called the Rosetta. It was a Rosetta mission, the Philae lander landed on there and they say our analysis and they did the samples in uh, 2015 they took a couple of good sized dust grains ground them all off and looked into them and what they found analysis revealed in far more complex form than expected uh, this fellow Herb Cotton a co-author on a new study said in a statement is so complex we can't give it a proper formula or name I can I know exactly what it is that is the molecules of life Hydrocarbons, iron, sodium, silicon, 
you know, watery ice up there, and they they realize this now, but they just, I don't know why they, they can't deal with it. Alright, this is on my old channel. Um, I have to move it over. This was on uh, Mud Fossils. Now it's Mud Fossil University, but you should come up and see this. It's called Comet 67P Mysterious Features Discussed. Now, it goes through this comet, and this comet is a tendon emphasis. I don't care what you say until you take a look at this and you see what I have to show you here and show you the structure of the tendon straps which are these little pinchy things which are the bun bundles these are the tendon fibers and through the whole thing I show over and over how it's built and constructed and how these things work and I have them here in my shop and here's the straps and the ones I have here's the little pinchy bundles at the ends I'm showing this in extreme detail between their samples and my samples. And I have abrupt transitions here showing it so abrupt that nobody could ever even understand how abrupt these transitions are. They cut off just like a knife. Then they go into the gluey stuff and then into the tendon fibers. There's no guesses here. And this is the part that is the, the actual muscle as it comes into the muscle from that gluey stuff that's an abrupt transition I show all this so you should come up here and watch this so and this is the tendon I mean the muscle that takes over after the tendon there's another abrupt transition then there's the last abrupt transition here's the Atlantic what was what does space smell like it smells like steak and seared steak or hot metal like welding fumes and so forth well the reason it has that kind of metallic smell to it is because they, they, those don't burn up. There's no oxygen to speak of in space. So the, the, the coma that shoots out of meteorites and the different debris that's in space doesn't burn up like it would on a grill. That's the only difference. Now apparently when they come back and they take their space, space suits off, they say it smells like steak. And that's because these gases that are shooting out from all of these comets, as you will see in the Comet 67P that I, uh, video that I said to look at, if you look, you'll see it's very, very obvious. No question whatsoever, really. All right, now everybody says, oh, how can these things be so big? Well, they were just gigantic. This isn't even a big brain, but that is a brain from a giant. Now, how did that brain get out of the guy's head? Why is it out there just laying on the ground like a brain? Well, I can tell you why. In salt water, bone dissolves. It's normally wrapped up in your body in a fabric that Greeks call tunica. It's a, it's a, 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 I think we call it periosteum now, but it's a layer that surrounds bones that sequesters that particular phosphors and, and, and um, all of these volatile chemicals in there, calcium and all that business, and it keeps them away from the salty conditions of your body. When the great flood happened, it flooded everything, the bones dissolved, but, but the, the flesh and the skin and the organs, which love salt water, they just, they just stayed in there, and the things that normally would have rotted away and been eaten by insects and so forth, that was inside the water, they're floating in the water, the gas and the things that would have exploded them just purges off into the water. It's absorbed, it goes into solution. So you end up with these flap uh, pieces of meat literally floating around in the ocean. Now, the ones that were stuck in the mud, their feet are stuck in the mud. They're just stuck there, floating, buoyant in the ocean. And then when they subsided and dried out, all of the above-ground flesh would have just fell, fallen away to the ground. The feet are very, very tendon, ten, tendons in their, your ankles and so forth. It's almost no organic matter other than, you know, when I say organic matter, I mean fleshy stuff. It's almost all tendinous material, and that's calcium, CaCO3, calcium carbonates, and other inclusions of minerals and so forth in there. So they don't rot away or anything. They just turn into, and they're also surrounded by fascia. Let me show you this, because this is what everybody misses on these. They think everything's a tree. It's not trees. They're the feet of miles-tall giants. 
All right, you're going to have to do a little investigation on your own. I'm going to leave it at this. But these are what the tendons are in your feet, in your legs, in your arms, in your body, everywhere. They attach bone to bone and, and, and different places on your body to bones and so forth to give you strength to put so you can pull against something. And these are the things, they are tough as hell. And they have fascia. See this fascia, Lee? It's called fascia coats every one of these little bundles, these little hex bundles. And it coats them when you're alive so they can slide back and forth. And they are strong, 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 and they run the whole length. They're not just one little chunk, a chunk, a chunk, a chunk, a chunk. They are the t continuous fibers, which you see on Devil's Tower, up till the where it breaks at the top. And that's called the abrupt transition. And that is where you have um, the tendon under tension. And it, it breaks there, and you get a wrinkle zone. That's why they see it at the top of Devil's Tower. And that's why they see these fibers everywhere around the world. Wherever you see those hex, hex fibers, that's not anything from vol volcanism. That's insanity. These hex fibers are from living tendons that died, were protected and preserved in the flood, and the fascia protects them in the flood exactly as it does after they're dead, as it did when you're alive. So that's why they're separated. All right, anybody that's been following mud fossils is going to understand this. These fibers are those hex fibers I just showed you. When you zoom in here and you see this red-looking stuff, that is the fascia, the little coating, the slippery little coating that coats all of these tendons. You'll see there's a little red here. See red here, red there. There's all that little red slippery stuff. These used to move individually on every one of them. Now you see the top, this all wrinkly looking stuff. Why is that? I can tell you why that is. Because these are under extreme tensions. And then, then when eventually they solidified and broke, you get these zones that are so under tension that they just turn into fracture zones or wrinkly zones. It depends on how they solidify. This is a fracture zone solidification. I have other ones that show total wrinkle, and I'll show you that. You see this one here? This is by Dreams Time, and it's, uh, that's the wrinkle zones at the top, and that's the, fra the uh, abrupt transition. Now, my take is that it could be a skull. I can't say it's not a skull, but I can say that it has a look of of uh, the head of a bone that has eroded away and broken and they break right next to the heads and um, these are what they call a uh, fossa f-o-s-s-a i believe and there there there's a blood dimple there on these bones now i don't know um what else to say but twisted in the right orientation and and with the correct erosion you may see exactly where you're looking at that thing that's in space. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I've looked at every single meteorite and, and comet and so forth that I can find. They are all biological. People in space say it smells like steak.